Welcome back to your favorite podcast, Two Homeschool Moms. I'm Nikki. And I'm Ashley. If you're looking for real, raw, and relatable moms who talk all things homeschool and mom life, you're in the right place. All right. So welcome back to our podcast. We are on episode nine. Nine? Already. <laughs> that's crazy. I can't wait till we hit 10. I feel like that's going to be like a special, special mark of episodes we've been doing. So today's topic, we're going to talk about the good and the beautiful curriculum. So we have lots of fun things to share and discuss. But before we get into that, we're going to do our normal little updates and catch up. So I think because it's right in the beginning of a new year while we're we're filming this. And we both love reading books. Mm. I think we need to talk about our like reading goal, like our personal reading goals for like our mom books that we read. Yeah. So uh, (laughs) again, what's that? (laughs) (laughs) Yes. And I have to call you out because we're supposed to be doing a buddy Uh, read right now. (laughs) Yeah. So I don't know if I have any actual goals because I feel like anytime I make a goal, they never, I don't make them. So I, in general, just want to enjoy taking the time through the book because, you know, I have a hard time keeping up with Miss Audiobook Lover over here (laughs) who can go through a freaking book a day, maybe even more. I don't know. But uh, (laughs) I actually have to read word for word on the page. (laughs) <laughs> and I don't like skipping unless it's a whole lot of spice that I'm just annoyed with and over. Uh, oh, yeah, I don't skip anything. Oh, I definitely can. I will skim for the dialogue and then like forget the rest, especially if it's like an annoying over the top spicy scene that I'm just like not yeah. in the read. Um, yeah. I always look for the dialogue, though, because I feel like some things can come out in those right. scenes that you wouldn't yes. expect. <laughs> Yeah, when they're like literally, you know, on top of each other, you know, random <laughs> having like the most important information <laughs> conversation. And the- it's true, it's true. <laughs> That's why I know to look through the dialogue because you know, important stuff comes out. But wow, okay, what a way to lead off this video! Uh, oh my gosh, whatever this is, episode. <laughs> video episode we film this and we upload so it's it's like a video epi (laughs) video voice all right so not putting a number on it well how many books did you read in 2023 you've known i didn't count you don't Uh, track it on goodreads i did but i don't think it was accurate because i didn't always select like that i was reading the book yeah um so fail for me for that year but i didn't start reading last year until may so i feel like i missed the first four months, five months. Um, But I probably read 30 to 40, which is going to sound really low compared to your no, number. No, I think that's normal. I think that's high compared to the normal person. Well, you have to understand that for the first couple months, I literally did nothing else with my time. I read and nothing got done around the house because right. that's all I did on my free time is read and I neglected my child. So... <laughs> Here we are learning from our lesson and literally slowing it down. Yeah. Um. So I know I'm probably going to have a lower number this year or I might just break even. I don't know. But my goal, I guess, if I put one out there would be like 50 because I feel like that's a good solid number. But I also want to step into a new genre. Ooh. Like I don't what? know what that is. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm hoping I'll just see a book cover and I'll just be like, oh my God, that looks so good just by the book cover. Yeah. And not like just go in blind. Like yeah. I usually go in blind, but I'm hoping it'll be a, a different genre that I'll just like fall in love with. That's good. That's I think that's good. Good goals. What about you? Well, yeah. So I have to balance myself because like you said, I can finish more than one <laughs> book a day. Um, So I think I'm I think monthly I'm going to be around 10 to 15 books a month instead of like, what What was I doing in like July and August? Like 30 books a month? That's not going to happen. There needs to be a balance. <laughs> um, but it is like yesterday because I was like, okay, I'm going to read for an hour of the book we were going to read. And I did. I truly read for an hour, but then I was making breakfast and then I was cooking dinner and I'm by myself in the kitchen doing that. So I was just listening to the audiobook and then I looked down and I'm like, holy crap, I'm halfway through the book. I have to stop because it just, it flies when I'm on audio and so I was like crap I shouldn't have done that so we're reading a book right now called love and other 
words. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know the author. Christine Lauren? Christina Lauren? Yeah. So what, when, I've never uh, read this author before. But when she sent me that message, oh, did you read today? And I'm like, no, I've been like super distracted and like I can't focus. I'm like, and then you're like, oh, I should stop. I'm like halfway through and I'm like, I'm on page 13. <laughs> So I literally read for like two hours last night and I think I'm up to page 100 now. But I'm just, I don't know. I'm not a slow reader. It's no. just I don't listen to audiobook and I can't. So I can't like multitask. I have to literally yeah. just sit down and read a book. So kudos to all you audiobookers out there in the world that are able to do a bunch of things while you read a book. Yep. It's but definitely, definitely life changing. Well, I'll, I will only do chores if I'm listening to an audiobook. It's like motivation. It's like, all right, I have to do laundry. I get to listen to a book. Like, it's like my trade off for unfun yeah, things. Yeah, I could do that with podcasts, mm-hmm. but I feel like because if I miss something, like, it's not as crucial. Yeah. Whereas if I miss or get distracted from something in a book, I almost have to go back to like hear it. Right. So, but speaking of lessons learned, have we learned some lessons about the good and the cr- beautiful curriculum? We have. I think we both <laughs> have plenty of years of experience using the good and the beautiful and multiple things from the good and the beautiful that we're going to talk about today. Yeah. And this is such a broad topic. So like we are probably going to jump around in this video a lot, but I think it's because there's just so much we could touch on. Um, but let's just start. <clears throat> with a statistic. Okay. So I read, don't quote me though, I read <laughs> just by doing a quick Google search. Um, so feel free to do your own research. But this is what I saw first pop up in my feed was that in 2019, they were shy of making eight million dollars in sales for their curriculum or their company. Um, and then in 2020, it went to 30 2 million. Wild. Now, we all know 2020 was crisis year and a lot of people were homeschooling and so it made it seem like that was a jump because of that and I don't have any statistics after that year, but because I feel like they're a growing company, they're constantly doing things like they're obviously making a huge profit here and people like the curriculum. So that's mm-hmm. why we really wanted to come on here and talk about it because I think there's a lot of pros and cons to the good and the beautiful. Yeah, I agree. And I think it's one of the most well-known um, outside of the homeschool community. Like I was talking to my boss who doesn't homeschool her kids and I was literally just talking about homeschooling in general. And she's like, oh, like the good and the beautiful. And I was like, <laughs> what? I was like so taken back. And this was pro- this was like two years ago we had this conversation and I was like, yeah. Um, so I think that it's more like of a common like, household name too when you think yeah. of the term homeschooling. They have earned their spot. And I think that's what we're gonna talk about today. Like why are they so popular? What do we think about them? And going from there, because what did I say? They started their business opened in 2015. So they are, yeah, (laughs) I think that's what it was. So 2015. So at 2020, they had only been around for five years. So that is huge for a new business. And I think that's what we're seeing now. We're seeing them adjusting to their popularity and updating their curriculum to kind of match those needs. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure it's the most widely searched curriculum company ever. Yeah. Like, <laughs> um, I know, and I mean, that's all I used to see for years was just, uh, even on YouTube, just videos, the good and the beautiful, the good and the beautiful, and then all the people who promoted them and all the people who worked with them. And it's, they're, I mean... They have a business plan down pat, that's for sure, if everyone who doesn't even homeschool know about them. Mm-hmm. So you, okay, I'll start out with me because I don't want to speak for you. <laughs> okay. Um, but I know, so that was what we started out homeschooling with, um, was mm-hmm. the good and the beautiful. Because like everyone else, it just seemed everything was an all, it was an all-in-one curriculum. And it was easy for a newly parent who doesn't have teaching experience as their background to just jump in because it literally scripted word for word what I was to tell my child um, and how to teach it. And it flowed. They were fairly short lessons. Um, And it seemed like, I mean, I'll be honest, it worked really well for us for several years um, up until about 
the middle of our second grade year because of this ease into approach. So let's, so you started it from the beginning. You did their pre-K, their preschool Uh, pre-K. No. So I started out with, so they had it. I don't believe they sell this anymore, but they started with this primer. Yeah. Hey, which was kind of like the in-between between between preschool and kindergarten. And so we started with that and I got, they had like an extra package you could add on to that that had just like extra practice pages. Mm Mm-hmm. And so I attest to this curriculum for teaching my kid how to read um, because I, I mean, we've talked about this, maybe not on the podcast, but I know I've mentioned before that I don't know that she would be as good of a reader if we Mm -hmm. didn't use this curriculum because I tried the hundred and hundred easy lessons to teach your kid to read. Yeah. yeah, and it was so dry, and I'm sure it works. I'm sure it's a great book yeah. for those who could use it. But The Good and the Beautiful is beautiful, and it yeah. is appealing, and it is, in you know, it makes it look good to the eye. And um, it made my child want to do it because it had activities, and it had things to cut out and match the vowels and all this stuff. And it literally drilled into her head a lot of the early concepts that you need to be able to learn how to read. So, yes. Um, We did kindergarten, primer K, kindergarten, grade one, grade two of language arts, and we're using it this year in grade three, which was not planned or expected because we quit it mid-year of our second grade year, but my daughter requested to bring it back. Mm -hmm. So I did because you just listen to your kids sometimes. (laughs) Right. Yeah. So they do have that level you're talking about, the in-between preschool Mm. and kindergarten, but it's called preschool prep. Or pre or kindergarten prep is what it's called now. And it's a super short, like 30 lesson. So we're using that now. But between all of my kids, I've used preschool through fourth grade for language arts and math. Um, and so yeah, it's I see the pros of the earlier years. And that's why as soon as you were talking about how you taught Molly to read, I was like, you know what? Actually, this would be a great curriculum for Nico learning to read our first time getting into homeschooling from the ground up because my other girls were still in public school their you know kindergarten years and I love it and like he is excited I open up the lessons and in the little books it's yeah. like a big picture like right now he's like going through a castle and so he knows every like lesson he gets to go to like a new part of the castle and so they've got that down like the captivating right. beautiful part <clears throat> They have that down pat, and I think that's why it makes it so easy. Kids want to do it. Um, And then they have all these, like, songs that I'm not personally a fan of. They're not catchy to me, but my son loves them, and I'll find him just sitting in his room singing these songs about letters and alphabet and all of that. See, and maybe that was something I skipped, but I don't remember the songs that early on. It could have been something they added on later. Yeah. Or it literally could have been there and I just I'm not a song person so I didn't even (laughs) introduce the song but uh we find we don't like songs in general in curriculum uh so we tend to skip that but they did in recent years add a homeschool app Mm -hmm. that's uh, where we watch there yeah so the app I wish was let less oh what's the word not glitzy why can't I think of this word it's glitchy Glitchy, yes, okay. The app? Know why I was the thinking. homeschool app is glitchy? Yeah, for us it is. What is it? I'll like, what are you doing? I'll go into it to, like, go on a video or something, mm-hmm. and it'll, like, it's not listed. And then I have to, like, go oh. out, go back in, and so then it'll be listed. Oh, uh, weird. <laughs> yeah, so, I don't know. Maybe it's just my phone. I don't know, but it can be annoying. Um, But there's a lot on the app, and then they have, actually, I think there's two apps. There's two there's apps. Like, there's the letter tile app. Which I don't even know oh, what yes. that is. We haven't got there yet. So the letter tile app we used in grade two. And that's just where they have on some lessons, not all lessons, but some lessons you go in and it'll be like, spell this word. Oh, we And so they'll those. go and like drag the tile to spell out the word or whatever. That's like, um, there's um, another <laughs> curriculum company that has done that for years. All about reading or all about spelling. But they physically yeah, have the those. tiles. Yeah. So that's just yeah. like that. Yeah. And like... <laughs> She, I mean, it wasn't a big deal for us because she's a decent speller. And so it was just like, really, mom, like, I have to go use yeah. this. And I'm like, so eventually we just kind of stopped using it. Um, but I like that it's there for an option. I think they're starting to, in the beginning stages of catering it to learning styles. And 
I wish and hope that they could do more for that down the road as they grow. But Mm -hmm. I feel personally that every lesson should have some form of video concept as well and not just here and there where you have a lesson to open up the app and be a video. Yeah. Like teaching the lesson, you mean? Like, or just like an additional, yeah. Not just so that it's off the parent, but just so that if you have a kid who's a visual learner and needs a different learning style approach than just, you know, reading through the textbook or whatnot, just broadening their approach there. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think they're on the right path. It's just I I wish that it was a little more. Yeah, I agree. And then too, just kind of trying to remember like Mila going through that second grade, third grade. I mean, no, she didn't get to third grade, but she was a really good reader, a, you know, right. a really strong reader. And their emphasis on phonics was so, so competitive, <laughs> yes. which if you're teaching a kid to read and they're not a strong reader, I totally get it. But what was frustrating is we were skipping so much of the lesson that I wasn't yeah. finding it beneficial. So it's almost like they need to cater to different cool. learning styles and different levels with levels the level. where the kids are if they're a strong reader you go through this path if you're not you go through this path and so that is because, where like, we struggled <clears throat> well yeah because if your kid already knows how to read the word mm-hmm. why do they need to break it apart right not a Phonetically, like it doesn't make sense. And that's where she would get caught up and going, I don't know. And she'd get really frustrated. And I'm like, Mm -hmm. it's okay. As long as you know how to say the the word without needing that, then that's fine. And like you, like Mila is a really good reader. And I, Mm -hmm. Molly's a really good reader. So I feel like they just skipped over that. Yeah. Like once they got the hang of it and saw this stuff in books, they were just skipping through that. Now, like you said, if you have a struggling reader, but then you also have to think of it as I believe the good and the beautiful levels are definitely ahead of other curriculum because we've gone to like different things and it's definitely been like things we've already learned the concepts to. Mm -hmm. So you have to kind of cater that to your kid. I think that I got that question because I did ask on my Instagram what questions people had about the good and the beautiful. And I think someone asked if it's like on level, if it's advanced, it's definitely not lacking. I I don't think it's behind. It covers lots of concepts. It covers them in a spiral approach. So you'll be introduced to something, you'll be introduced to something else, then it will kind of go back to it. And so it's not lacking, I would say. But I don't know if it's advanced. I think it's on par is what I'll say. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> I forget which curriculum I compared it to. Um, master books, maybe, which <laughs> they do not like you speaking of that, of the good and the beautiful, which whatever, you know, like I'm going to speak however I want. But <clears throat> I compared it to that curriculum and that curriculum felt behind compared mm-hmm. to what we were going with, with the good and the beautiful. Now. Does that mean they're behind? No, it just means that that was what I had to compare it to. Yeah. Um, But so let's just address some of the questions that you got. You did a poll on your Instagram where you Mm -hmm. asked your followers to if you had if they had any questions or anything we wanted to bring up this video. So we got one of them down. Did we get any more? Yeah. So I'll do two at once because they basically said the same thing where it seems all over the place and bounces around too much. Um, And that's kind of talking about their spiral method is where we'll talk about, I don't know, adding fractions in math for one lesson. And then you don't talk about fractions again for like two months. And I do remember that in both language arts and their math. If you are briefly introduced a quick concept, but then it's like it when it gets reintroduced, it expects you to just like, just no. Know. And I'm like, yeah. whoa, whoa, we, we, what, what do you mean? Like, I don't even remember. Like, we barely touched on that. Yeah. Yeah. So I completely agree, especially in the <laughs> older years, especially in math, that you are bounced all around. That's the method that they use. And I, it may work for some. It didn't work for us. Yeah, I, I agree. And I think that even if we backed it up to not even just bouncing all over the place, but the way, how do I word that? <clears throat> The way the math introduced concepts with every single method possible on how to solve said concept Mm -hmm. also confused my child because if she knows how and she knows best with using a number line, I had to then suffer through another lesson of introducing a way to do the 
the math problem where it wasn't working for her. So then I felt I just had to skip through it because I was confusing her because she can get the same answer by doing it the way that she already knew how to do it. A thousand so percent, yes. If they would have organized that a little bit better, where they introduced different types of concepts, maybe made that into a video or mm -hmm. something that said, okay, if your child's not understanding, maybe you could try this method and gave it like a um, optional approach and not necessarily a, this is what's going to happen on this lesson, even though it's literally what we did two lessons ago, but this is a different approach. <laughs> Um, because so much of that, she was just like, I, I don't know, like she, she's a number line kid. And so a lot of the other methods just weren't aligning with that. And so I found it was just making her more frustrated than anything. Yeah. I, was, I as soon as you said that, I was like, yep, I remember those days because Mila's like, I know how to do this. Why? And then she would get confused and get the answer wrong doing it the new method. And it would happen right. so quickly to where they haven't mastered that first skill yet. Like they haven't even right. mastered the first way you taught it. Let's right. not introduce a new a different one. Yeah. Like yeah. if you want to do that, it's totally fine. But let's at least give them the chance to like be confident in the first yeah. way. So mm -hmm. yeah, I do. I feel that. And then as the grades got older, I felt overwhelmed with the pages. How it's because it's. Oh, yeah. teacher guide and student guide on one page. So there's no separate teacher's manual, which in the younger grades, like right now with like pre pre K preschool, that's nice because we're just sitting down together. There's not a lot on the page, but right. in that third grade math textbook, I have like PSTD or PTSD from it because <laughs> I just remember like sitting there with Emma and I'm like, there's so many freaking words on this page between her and I. And I'm just like, we shut down. We couldn't well, get we through it. Skipping sections because our eyes were following on to something else and not yeah. going in like this rigid column order, you know, and yeah, that, that was a big thing for me and why we decided to away from the good and the beautiful for math because it was just too much on a page for us. And then, you know, we went over to Apologia, which I didn't mind. I, I actually enjoyed that curriculum. I just felt it wasn't enough then. It felt yeah. it went from two drastics. I went from holy crap, look at all this on a page to mm -hmm. what? That's it. Um, Like there's only 10 and there was like 30 on the good and the beautiful <laughs> in every which corner of the page. Like I just I don't know. And then there, there wasn't enough space for the child to do their work unless they Correct. wrote really small. And my kid yeah. was not a write really small kind of gal. And I couldn't get her to work it out on a separate piece of paper, <laughs> mm -hmm. which sounds silly. But like, if you're not taught to do that from the beginning, then it's foreign to you to use that as like a, a thing to do. <laughs> yeah, I still struggle with getting her to note take on a separate piece of paper. Because yeah, she never went to public school. She never knew how to take notes or how to work things out outside of a curriculum. Mm -hmm. Because in the beginning, it wasn't like that. And then when we started getting into second and third, it was like, whoa, yeah, a lot, a lot in a lesson, a lot on a page. And I wasn't really a fan of how they introduced multiplication, but mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. <clears throat> well, let's go positive. Let's let's switch back. So I think I think I understood where they were going in third grade uh, with all that overwhelmingness because I think their goal was to be have kids become more independent. So I think as much oh, as yeah. they wanted to tell the t parent what to do, they also wanted to tell the kids. So I did like that building independence path. They did it better in their language arts. So in their fourth grade language arts, I believe if I remember correctly, the book is written towards to the kid, like start your day, this is what you do. So it's not overwhelming because there's not two, you know, instruction pass, it's one for the kid and they can kind of check off each one. So I think that's what they were going for in those older grades, but I haven't looked at fifth grade, sixth grade. I don't even know what's past that, what they have. So maybe that, maybe they just didn't hit it on the head with the third grade math. Because it was like they're both wor worlds. It was just too much is what I'll say. The language arts was were, okay. And they were newly released editions. So yeah, <clears throat> they were, right? Was math new? Was math, th math three a new release when we yep. did it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. And mm -hmm. math two was fairly as well. We did the old math one, which had 
a crap ton of manipulatives. Um, <laughs> I mean, insane amount of manipulatives, mm-hmm. which I think they learned their lesson there yeah. because they definitely scaled back on that in the other levels. But I'm pretty sure Math 1 was either coming out that year or I just got it on sale or sale price for being level one or I might have even bought it used I don't remember but Mm -hmm. yeah I mean they're they are it's a good thing that they're I mean for them only being around since 2015 and already redoing their curriculum and putting the time and money and energy into that that's a big deal that I wish some other companies would do (laughs) yeah Um, they are always listening for feedback they are always updating their curriculum so yeah and you just said it no other curriculum company I think that I know of has done that many new additions or releases in a short period of time they've revamped everything in the past two years I'm pretty sure of the good and the beautiful they've revamped it and not only have they revamped it but they offer so much of it for free I mean, for being a fairly new company, um, it's amazing that they're able to offer like their language arts for level, I think, K through eight all have free PDF um, options. And I think math goes K through six, I believe. Um, I know me and you were talking about how it's a little wonky that they don't offer it for preschool (laughs) Um, or for like handwriting, which is literally like 50 pages or something Mm -hmm. like that. But I mean, you can't complain. You can't. You can't can't uh, complain too much when there is so much available for free. And it extends that, like you were saying, if someone, well, what you were telling to me privately, <laughs> that, you know, if they're in the military, um, and you're in another country, it's, it's allowing their curriculum to be more accessible to people um, and helping cut costs down as well for shipping or, you know, I know if I, I almost never want to ship my curriculum because I hate telling them that they're going to have to pay like $25 for me to ship the box when it's, oh, it's probably so $5, yeah. you know, I know we use the science as well from them in the very beginning and I'm so glad they revamped the science because, holy crap, that is not a K-8 through curriculum for some of these units. Um, When I was using it with my kindergarten and first grade level child at the Mm -hmm. time, she was not learning anything. And it was overwhelming. There was so much to cut out. There was just so much going on um, that I was like, it just felt like it was not for that grade level. And they listened And they Mm -hmm. came out with, I think it's K through two, has two units now for the littles. Okay. Um, And we tried the hearts and hands one or something. I mm-hmm. forget what it was, but it was like trees and flowers. Like fields and flowers. What? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We tried that one. And honestly, if we were science people, we probably would have stuck with it because mm-hmm. there was nothing wrong with it. Uh, I just suck at doing science. So, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. But it was really good. I like that they had its own separate book for the story and then its own separate book for like the lesson. Mm-hmm. And then there were also video options as well and you know, art and all that stuff they could take advantage of for the littles. And then the other ones went from three to eight, which totally made more sense to me. Um, We have thoroughly enjoyed the last one we were doing, The Human Body. Um, That was a really good one. And it comes with the student notebooks now. So Mm -hmm. the student notebooks, I feel like were so well thought out. Unlike apologias where we both struggled with that notebook because there was so much in the notebook that was just like busy work Mm -hmm. um and like coloring pages and scripture and all this stuff where I feel like the good and the beautiful is very tiny and it literally is like this is the activity that goes with the lesson Mm -hmm. and that is it (laughs) yeah um So I think they've come a long way in their short amount of years for being in business. And I think there's a lot, a lot of good and a lot of pros about the company. And it really just matters if it's working for you. And because they're constantly improving and updating and revamping, I'm not going to take them off the table for further down the line if I need to go back to them because it 
probably will be revamped and different and maybe better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I and that's kind of where whenever I share about it, it's like I don't use it for a certain child or a certain grade level in our homeschool because something else works better or I like something better. And but also, yeah, I'm open to new stuff like we used their original history curriculum, which they've gone away with. um, And I was not a fan. But also it kind of sounds like the how they had science. It was like a history curriculum from kindergarten to eighth grade. And I was trying to use it with a first and third grader. And I'm like, I couldn't even like follow along on it, but I am so excited for what they decide to come out with. I think in the next year or two, they're revamping their history. And if it's anything like what they've done with science, I can't wait to try it. I I think it might be a great, a great program. Um, So yeah, I can't, I can't say it's off the table, but um, I've definitely got scared away. Like with the science ones, we did a bunch of the old science curriculums and I did like them. But there was so much prep work on my end that it's kind so of like prep work. I, I was just like, you know what, I don't and I know the new <laughs> ones aren't like that. But it was just like, I just kind of got like a no, we're good. But maybe in the future, their little that little well, program and, sounds good. The kid, the little kid, yeah, one. the little one. Honestly, I wish it was like that for a little bit even later than just second grade, which I know you can use it for any level or any grade. It's not like it's not adaptable. Um, Mm -hmm. I feel like their curriculum out of a lot of curriculums are super adaptable in that way. Um, Even going through the new science, it's so easy to pair up extra resources with what you're learning about um, because Mm -hmm. it's just made to be super adaptable. Um, And it's just, it flows. It flows. When I even compare that to doing, I know this is a completely different company, but when I even compare it to using Math with Confidence, that does not flow. (laughs) Not for me. And like Mm -hmm. someone recently just commented on a video of mine and they're like, you know, I went in a group and asked the tips and stuff on how better to use the curriculum. And I'm like, well, why should that be a thing? Like, I feel like companies... The Good and the Beautiful has been so good at listening to the complaints of people who have used the company that they're making these changes in their new levels to make it easier and adaptable. Whereas I don't know, I haven't used Math with Confidence for all that long, but why should I have to highlight my script (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) to make it flow? Like it's it's hard when you get in the upper level to really pay attention um, and follow it as you're trying to teach the lesson to your child. I, the, the, the teacher's manual, as much as I wish the good and the beautiful had separate teacher's manuals mm-hmm. for the upper levels, um, I feel like they would do it a heck of a lot easier <laughs> um, because they have their flow down, I feel like, in majority of their curriculum. So yeah. there's so many different curriculums that just do things differently. But I got spoiled because that's what I was used to. Mm -hmm. And it was easy for the parent. Yeah, you can't. If you need a open and go, you have no idea what you're doing. A thousand times I will recommend the good and the beautiful to whoever. Um, But then you you make a good point because maybe there's somebody that can't follow along with the good and the beautiful. Maybe that method doesn't work. And I think that's why we're blessed to have so many different choices, because if it doesn't work for you, it may work for someone else. Um, and then companies like Math with Confidence, they're brand new. They just started releasing right. curriculum within the past couple years. And so right. hopefully they take a lesson from the good and the beautiful from feedback and say, okay, maybe this is what would work better for parents that are homeschooling. So those are good points. Yeah. And it's it's hard, right? Like when we first start out homeschooling, we want what's going to be best for us in that moment to get us through the year, to get mm-hmm. us through our first year of not knowing what the heck we're doing. Yeah. And I feel like a lot of people gravitate towards that curriculum for that reason. But then there could be so many options out there. It could be good and bad to have that many resources and that many curriculum choices because then it's like, oh, how do I choose? Yeah. How do I... I want it all. (laughs) one that's right for my child. How do I, you know, nothing is going to be the perfect curriculum. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm going to repeat that. Nothing is going to be the perfect curriculum because I had to learn, I had to learn that lesson the hard way. Mm -hmm. I thought there was going to be a perfect curriculum out there for my kid. And it's just not like that. Mm -hmm. And you have to pick and choose what you take because curriculum is just a book. That doesn't mean you have to use every single thing in that book. 
doesn't mean you can't add to that book. It doesn't mean you can't have supplemental things or not have supplemental things. You have to cater it to your kid. And I think that a great takeaway from this is that we could sit here all day long and hash out the pros and cons of this curriculum. And they are our opinion. And there are opinions of others who have made that comment to us. But it's never going to be perfect for everybody. It's just not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's another tool in our homeschool mom tool belt that if it helps your homeschool and makes your days easier to get through lessons, then use it. And if it doesn't, put it back and find a different tool to use. Um, So I think we've talked about a lot. I have one more question for you before I think we should wrap this up. If you Uh had to pick, what is your favorite thing, What your favorite anything from the good and the beautiful that you've used? Oof. I love catching you. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man, how do I choose? How do I choose? I think we had the most fun using our kindergarten language arts because it was so engaging with not just like learning how to read, but like activities to help you learn how to read. I don't know. We just had a lot of fun. And when I look back in videos, like old, old videos of mine, Mm -hmm. we were so happy. We were like super enjoying that year. Yeah. What about you? I would say right now I'm tied between the kindergarten prep that I'm doing right now, but I'm only like 10 lessons in and then the language arts level one. Because like you, Mm -hmm. it was, it was because we didn't start homeschooling with the and the beautiful. We switched about four months into homeschooling and it was like a breath of fresh air. It was so nice to just open and go. And I just love the activities that Mila did. Like she wrote a letter about how much she loved homeschooling. She read some really good books. And so those like little first memories are like just so great. And it was just so nice and easy. We forgot to talk about the books. Okay, time out. I kinda, that's why this I was kind of is... doing that. I thought you were going to talk about the books as your favorite thing. And I'm like, all right, what do you love about the good and the beautiful? I know. Okay, okay, okay. The curriculum wise, I would pick language arts for okay. sure. Oh, I want to pick if a book talking, too. Okay. If we're talking about books. Yeah. Oh, I, I don't know that I could pick a specific one, but we, I think the one that we have really liked the most was from the eighth floor or something. Timothy in the eighth floor. Yeah. Timothy in yes. the 10th floor. Timothy in the eighth floor, which was the start of their Badger Hills farm series. Mm-hmm. And that is now out, but not available. Sold out. <laughs> Sold out. Um, which blows my mind with how much this company does. And they've somehow messed up their release day with not having enough books, but whatever. Like, we got them because I ordered them, like, as soon as I saw the email. Mm -hmm. Um, But she and I both really enjoyed and looked forward to reading that book. Um, And then when she found out there was more coming, she was making me check, like, (laughs) on a weekly basis. And I'm like, it says... 20 like the end of 2023 um so the fact that she was so excited to get the other books um that's a big deal because Mm -hmm. especially if you have a struggling reader or something like that like you want a good book that's going to engage them to want to come back (laughs) yeah What's yours? Um, So ours was actually part of the old level three curriculum. It was the kingdom of kind story. So every couple of lessons, they would read a part of it. And they recently actually revamped that. And now it's its own book. I love those stories. Like I still remember them. I remember Emma reading them. Um, Mila's about to read it because I bought like the individual book. That is my favorite story. I think it teaches such good, just like, I don't know, thoughts about like others and like, you know, yeah. It's good. What are the way? Emphasis on character development and values. Yeah. Uh, It definitely nails that to a T. But the only thing I really wish in the, ones that they've revamped Mm -hmm. is that there's no like we're reading this book but it doesn't always connect to the lesson it doesn't Mm. give comprehension it doesn't give really anything it'll throw like a vocab in there sometimes (laughs) but then it's literally like I noticed like there's another word in there where I'm like why wasn't that a vocabulary (laughs) word like like I feel like there could definitely be improvement in that scenario because Mm -hmm. while there are books that go along with the language arts I don't feel like it's connected in the way that I would have envisioned it to be connected yeah yeah I agree I'm I'm remembering back yeah 
Yeah, their books are great. They're and you can always trust them. Like I feel a thousand percent confident grabbing a book and handing it to my kid and not having to pre-read it or pre-screen it. Yes. So that's always yeah. uh, a lovely thing. Yeah. So wow. All right. Here's our our good and the beautiful pros, cons, the good, the bad, the ugly, all in one, wrapped up in a pretty bow. Yeah. And we want to hear out. your thoughts. So if do you agree with us? Do you disagree? Did we miss something important about the good and beautiful? Leave it in the comments. Message us whatever you got to do email whatever you want to do yeah all right bye guys Love to hear from you your feedback is invaluable to us so let us know your thoughts on today's episode share your topic suggestions or ask us any burning questions you may have your input shapes the direction of our podcast and we're here to create content that resonates with you if you enjoy listening to homeschool stories curriculum reviews advice struggles and overall mom life this podcast is for you but so is our YouTube channels. Don't forget to check out our individual channels. We share even more content, insights, and a behind-the-scenes look at our lives. Thanks for listening.